Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to ME Organics Limited Q1 FY24 earnings conference call hosted by Ambit Capital. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Prashant Nair from Ambit Capital. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Yusuf. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Prashant Nair from Ambit Capital. I welcome you to the quarter one FI24 earnings conference call of Ami Organic. From the management, we have with us Mr. Naresh Patel, Chairman and Managing Director, and Mr. Bhavin Shah, CFO. Uh, I will now hand over the call to uh, Mr. Bhavin Shah for uh, opening comments. Uh, over to you, Bhavin. Thank you, Prashant. Good evening, everyone. We are pleased to welcome you all to our earnings conference call to discuss Q1 FI24 financials. Please note that a copy of our disclosure is available on the investor section of our website as well as on the stock exchanges. Please do note that anything said on this call which reflects our outlook towards the future or which could be construed as forward-looking statement must be reviewed in conjunction with the risk that the company faces. The conference call is being recorded and the transcript along with the audio of the same will be made available on the website of the company and exchanges. Please also note that the audio of conference call is the copyright material of AMI Organics and cannot be copied, rebroadcasted or attributed in press or media without specific and written consent of the company. With that, I would like to hand over the floor to our CMD, Mr. Naresh Patel, for his opening statement. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Bhavin. Thank you, Prasanta. Good evening, everyone. I hope you all are doing well. A warm welcome to our Q1 FY24 earning conference call. Before I discuss the business performance of the company, I will take a couple of minutes to discuss some important economy and industry trends. Global economy are grappling with inflation except for China, which is experiencing deflation, which has led to reduce internal demand and pricing pressure. The oversupply issue in China's manufacturing sector has compelled them to export excess production worldwide. As a result, solvent and key raw material prices have decreased, along with lower cost of pharmaceutical and agrochemical intermediates. So the supply side situation has improved significantly, and I anticipate demand side challenges to normalize in future, which will bring about a balance. Hence, the current sector, current state of the chemical industry is transient and with prospect of the recovery ahead. Coming to the performance of Ami Organics during the quarter. As you all know, Q1 has historically been a weak quarter for us. Our revenue from our operations for quarter was Rs. 142 crore, which is 9% growth in growth over Q1 FY23. I am extremely pleased that we have been able to deliver sustained growth during the quarter on the back of deflation in rising environment in the chemical industry. I will let Darwin discuss the numbers in detail later. Coming to the business segment, the pharmaceutical intermediate business grew by 5% during Q1 FI24. The slower growth was due to sluggish demand in the export market, which was balanced by robust transition in the domestic market. This is a reflection of our diversified portfolio, which always helps us wade through difficult quarters. Moving on to the suicide chemical business, we have been highlighting this throughout last year that our focus through the period was on streamlining operations optimizing capacity, upgrading process, which took it sweet time. Our guided early, as guided earlier, we, are, we will start seeing the fruits of these efforts. In fact, the results are visible in Q1, where the business has already picked up and our revenue from the chemicals business has jumped by 25% year on year to rupees 27 crore. Now, please understand, this is a, in the backdrop of very challenging environment that the industry is going through and we, we are still able to deliver on this front. I would like to highlight here that 
we have sent validation samples to the customers for new products during Q1, and we have now received commercial orders for the same. I will disclose more about this product once we start commercial supplying in coming quarters. While the product will ramp up gradually, we will catalyze the specialty chemicals growth further. Overall, I believe we will see robust growth in specialty chemicals in FI24. Coming to the required additive business, we are very close to signing contracts with few customers and updates will be shared as soon as and how we progress. What I can say is the size of these contracts will be larger than what we had anticipated. I believe we, we will see the numbers coming in our books during FS half year to FY24. On concluding note, I believe even as the external environment remains challenging, we are confident delivering strong 2020% growth during the year. With that, I request our CFO, Mr. Bhavin Sahib, to discuss the financial details. Over to you, Bhavin. Thank you, Naresh Bhai. Good evening, everyone. I would like to briefly touch upon the key performance highlights for the quarter and year ended quarter uh, ended 30th June 2023. And then we'll open the floor for question and answer. Uh, I will begin with quarterly updates. Revenue from operations for the quarter was at 142 crore, up 8.7 percent as compared to 131 crore in Q1 FI23. The gross profit for the quarter was at Rupees 63.7 crore, which was split when compared to same last with compared to same period last year. The gross margin for the quarter was at 44.8 percent. Lower gross margin was due to change in product mix during the quarter. EBITDA for the quarter was at rupees 25.2 crore, up 9.7 percent as compared to rupees 22.9 crore in Q1 FI23. EBITDA margins for the quarter were at 17.7% compared to 17.5% in Q1 FI23. EBITDA margin grew by 20 basis point in Q1 FI24 compared to the same period in last year. The growth in EBITDA margin was somewhat suppressed on account of higher employee cost, which was driven by annual increments, performance bonus, as well as higher wages. Please note that as per government of Gujarat, uh, as per government of Gujarat, increase minimum wages of the workers by 25% for all category of uh, workers, which has impacted the employee cost during the quarter. Paid for the quarter was at 16.6 crore, up 12% on YOY basis. The paid margin for the quarter were at 11.7% as compared to 11.3% in Q1 FI23. Export for the quarter was at 37%, whereas domestic business was at 63%. I would like to highlight that the export business looks low during the quarter due to two main reasons. First, Naresh Bhai has also alluded in his opening remarks that demand in export market was sluggish in Q1. And second point is that one of the formulators changed their API supplier from overseas to India. Therefore, those products the supply was in a domestic business during the quarter. Coming to balance sheet, we have net debt-free balance sheet with net cash balance of around 28 crore as at 30th June 2023. Before I conclude, I would like to highlight that Q1 is always weak for us, but I believe that we'll witness a strong growth sequentially from Q2 onwards, which will be coupled with upward trajectory in EBITDA margin, and therefore we are Confident to deliver 20 to 25% growth with more than 21% EBITDA margin for the financial year 2024. With this, I conclude my remarks and request the moderator to open the floor for a question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Chirag Lodaya from ValueQuest. Please go ahead. Yeah, congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, so my first question was on intermediate business. So we grew around 5% and you know, the growth 
in this challenging environment etc you, you already alluded that if you can just help us understand you know what exactly uh, you know led to this is it more volume pressure uh, pricing pressure you are seeing or increasing competitive intensity in some of your products so some color on that would be helpful Uh, so you mean to say is that five uh, percent uh, growth is lower because of uh, competition and all? Is, is it correct? We are trying to understand what exactly you know led to this. Weakness. Yeah. So current the market scenario is like this, where pharmaceutical the pharmaceutical market is little bit growing, uh, uh, taking tractions and it is moving faster. Uh, against the other uh, pharmaceutical European uh, market as well, right? Uh, our major business is in Europe for uh, regulated market, and uh, generic market is based in Asia and mainly in India. See, uh, because of the current price uh, decremental of the kero material, and one of our customer has also have pearl manufacturing started in India. Our domestic sales is increased, and uh, overall our domestic sales is uh, uh, margins are a two to three percent lower than the our exports. So that has also directly impacted on our uh margin there is growth uh, point of view uh because the remote price go down our top line is also have a decrease because uh, domestic is always sport basis so on the current remote price we have to take an order so this is the reason why it is little bit on a on a lower side growth compared to we are expecting so so if i just look at remainder of you know my, this financial year we are still confident of achieving 20 25% growth so from where you know we are driving this confidence is it new product addition which will drive the growth or existing product you see much better ramp up in coming quarters <coughs> The uh, growth is uh, the beauty of Amiogenics product uh, product distribution is so that we have a versatile distribution. It will not uh, impacting with any product go down or any customer go down. Go down. So and one uh, one more thing is that there are few products which we have done uh, validations and uh, approvals in uh, last uh, last few years. Now it's becoming a mature, and uh, we are expecting the order of that in Q3, uh, Q2, Q3, and Q4. So that will bring us the new growth in our and existing current business is also having a, a visibility which gives us and confidence that still we can able to manage the 20-25 percent. Uh, and that is also one of the reasons that rather than giving the fixed number, we are given this range because we are expecting there will be a price uh, pressure on the top line, and that's how we have changed our uh, guideline last quarter that 20-25 percent. And sir, this change in mix which we have seen towards export versus domestic, is this going to continue for remainder of the year, or this was one off uh, which has happened? No, it will be changed back to the normalisation because uh, uh, our few of our long term contract uh, customer has shifted their production from uh, uh, half year uh, from H1 to H2, and that is the reason why our Expert was a little bit lower in Q1, but it will be uh, uh, from uh, H2 of them will be incremental. So that will be go back to the normal, you know, 60, uh, 60, 40, 55, 45, like that. 55, 45, okay. Uh, and Narej Bhai, on electrolyte, you know, uh, you have mentioned that we are very close to signing of the contract, and the contract size would also be much larger than earlier anticipated. So in this context, you know, what kind of uh, readiness we have uh, because we need to create capacities and, you know, it will also have some lead time. So if you can throw some color on the kind of capacities we need to create and the kind of capex it will uh, incur. Yeah, so basically right from the beginning we are always saying that your right is our, not part of our guideline and that our statement was we had always stick with that. Uh, the reason for uh, a bit on a lower side is getting an order because of the targeting of IRA of uh, US uh, US related market. And now we got uh, in this uh, last two months we had a very good uh, development in that area. And we are placing a large order customer is expecting to visit our facility and once it will be finished and we go for the large uh, volume uh, agreement and we start supplying. 
to look at the capacity yes we need to have a put up a capacity larger like capacity once we start initially we start with a lower demand and then slowly slowly it will be pick up to the larger larger and for that we may have to put up a uh, additional uh, capacity which will be dedicated uh, manufacturing side for both the electrolyte and pc and vc what could be the quantum of capex uh it is uh it's very sensitive in terms of information and also i'm not uh, right now discussing the things but time comes we will probably give you the all the information related to capex and quantum and also the future guideline of the business as well got it got it uh, just one question bhavin bhai uh, then i'll come back in the queue uh, low, uh, other expense were uh, quite low in this quarter uh, what could be the reason for the same so in other expense uh, as we have more domestic supply we are able to uh, uh, save on uh, export logistic also we have changed the fuel in uh, at jagadia from a4 to call that has given us uh, uh, some uh, benefit as well as uh, uh, we have uh, uh, able to uh, save something on uh, uh, our effluent treatment cost also so cumulatively all this is uh, giving us a Uh, better other expense okay got it. thank you anand thank you next question is from the line of nilesh kuge from hdfc securities please go ahead yeah good afternoon mr sir and bhavin so see my first question on our fermian contract so as per our presentation that commercial production is expected to start from 4q of fy24 and um, correct me if i'm wrong so we have uh, contracts for three products right sir and uh, so out of these three products how many products we are planning to launch from 4q and uh, what kind of revenue do you envisage uh, from this contracts so any color on this sir okay let me thank you first of all let me correct that we have a contract of one product uh uh the other three are under uh, uh, approval and one we are already supplying since law since the clinical trial so uh, only one co- the, the final product contract we have and then there are four intermediate goes in the final product out of that three we are developing one is one of the uh, one is the, either the supplied or maybe some uh, uh, other indigenous company maybe supplied to us but uh, the final product which we have done the contract is then it will be long term 10 years contract uh, uh, with the firm okay and sir potential revenue uh, uh, in fy25 uh potential revenue i uh, as per the agreement with them we are not allowed to disclose the revenues and all similarly what we have the i Uh, said about the little like because the company which is we uh, are very really cautious about the disclosures, so they don't allow us to disclose uh, revenues and potentiality. But uh, that will be a sizable in in terms of uh, from Q4, and it will be mature in Q uh, FY25. It's fully mature. We already received the other commercial orders for uh, supplying in uh, Q4. Okay, okay, fair enough, sir. sir uh, my second question is uh, on our electrolyte additive business so uh, here also if you can uh, i know that the ramp up will be also here also will be very gradual so um, what kind of revenue you envisage uh, not uh, just near term but uh, three to five year perspective and i know that you are adding products also in this so but still if you throw some light on this uh the current uh, uh current uh, development in last 3 4 months and current uh, agreement uh, loi signs and all that will be uh it will be uh, much bigger than what we are doing right now so it will be i'm not guiding you i'm not giving you any projections for that but that will be as expectation of the we uh, we got the reports from the then uh, research uh, it will be uh, much bigger than uh, to what we have bigger than what we are yeah so i don't know up to what uh, what was my answer up to what he could able to hear 
last Hello? question. Uh, yeah, yeah, sir. I can hear you. Okay, so did you get my answer? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, now okay. my last question uh, to Bhavin. See, uh, what was the revenue of uh, our Baba Fine came uh, during this quarter? How much revenue reported? Uh, so uh, let me tell you that uh, uh, we are uh, yet to uh, uh, do this, but uh, just to give you a ballpark number, uh, it will be around uh, 12 crore. Bhavi, 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 it is not yet much later, so how can you give this number? Bhavi, Bhavi. Hello? Hello? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, uh, we, we will disclose the number of Baba Fine Kim when uh, we complete the transaction and uh, 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 merge it in our balance sheet. Okay. So, so okay, ma'am. Uh, this quarter number, consolidated number, does not include Baba Fine Chemical number. Yes. Right? So, uh, this does not include Baba Fine Kim. Okay. Fair enough. So that's all from my end, sir, and all the best for your future work. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sudarshan Parmadathan from JM Financial PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my question. So my question, you know, if I, you know, again, uh, split the business into two parts, the Gujarat Organics and the core business, uh, we have been seeing some kind of an improvement in Gujarat Organic. So, what is the margins that we are working today with, and where do we see the margins by the end of this quarter, and you know, probably in FY25? Uh, so, uh, uh, Mr. Padmanabhan, uh, for a specialty, uh, current margin is 11.1%, uh, and as we mentioned, that uh, we'll improve this margin by 100 basis point. Uh, 50 to 100 basis point uh, uh, every quarter. So we would like to uh, take this margin up to 18, 19%. That is 3 to 4% lower than our uh, uh, peak pharmaceutical, uh, peak uh, uh, pharma intermediate margin. Sure, sir. Sir, uh, with respect to, you know, the pricing environments, what we are saying is, I think, uh, you know, in your opening remark, we talked about a deflationary environment. So I am just trying to understand, you know, whether we are working on a EBITDA, you know, somewhat around EBITDA per kg basis or an EBITDA margin fixed margin basis. Just trying to understand whether in a deflationary scenario, our absolute EBITDA outlook would change in any in any way. Uh, so see, uh, EBITDA margin is the net outcome of uh, everything. Uh, Primarily, uh, as you know, that uh, for uh, our export business, we have a long-term contract and domestic business work on a sport basis. So, uh, uh, it is not as a thumb rule, uh, we'll fix a fixed percentage of EBITDA. It will depend on the product pro product to product and it will change uh, based on the uh, long-term contract and agreement with the customer. Sure, sir. And sir, when we are talking about, you know, this 20 to 25 percent growth, I mean, it is quite heartening because your nine months growth should be, you know, at least 25 percent. Is it coming from your confidence on, you know, the uh, Permian contract, which you are going to execute in the fourth quarter? Or is it more on some of the parts where you believe across the board you're seeing a fair amount of growth coming in electrolytes, your base business in, uh, you know, pharma intermediates as well as, elect you know, the uh, Permian contract, all the three put together? Thank you. Uh, Electrolyte business is not a part of this growth, uh, but uh, yes, there are some portions from the Fermion contract and some portions which is uh, we got an approval and uh, commitment, formal commitment from the customer. Based on that, we are right now guiding 20-25% to growth. Uh, for the time being, it is not uh, necessary to revise the growth target because we have on on confirmation and on book uh, sufficient uh, projections which we had uh, we had discussion with our customers. If something will be changed, we will upfront count and inform you. But for the time being, we are confident that we will reach reach twenty twenty five percent. Yes, sir. One final question before I join the queue is a little bit you know 
more from a strategy perspective on you know uh, baba fine camp not necessarily asking the numbers but you know since this capability can be extrapolated in terms of newer avenue of growth one is what is you know when can we expect you know visible numbers to start flowing through and number two what is the kind of quantum in terms of jump that we can expect from you know this business over 2 to 3 years numbers will be started uh, uh, coming in from q2 and of q2 and uh, jump will be you will see in fy25 in terms of magnitude of numbers would it be you know quite substantial to our size sir i mean just qualitatively trying to understand uh bhai did you get the question so right now uh, as we have not merged uh, we refrain to uh, answer this question uh, but uh, already we have mentioned that uh, what was the last year transaction in uh, their growth rate Sure. Thanks a lot. I'll hand back to you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Akul Brochwala from Ocean Dial Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, two questions from my side. Uh, first on uh, Ankleshwar Capex. So you know, uh, in terms of uh, the uh, uh, the contract with Formula, like, can you? probably shared as to like how many lines or you know what proportion of uh, the capex that we are doing would be dedicated towards for one contract uh, it's uh, not looking for exact quantification but you know qualitatively what portion of our uh, capacity will get occupied because of that contract at amplation so in complete sure we are given four blocks out of the three is for manufacturing and one is one block for the solvent recovery and hydrogenation So out of the three main block, one block is only dedicated for formula. These two blocks are uh, freely available for our future product as well as some other customers with whom we are right now talking uh, uh, similar kind of uh, arrangement. Understood. And uh, basically, the kind of products that we are going to launch would be similar to what we manufacture today. Is that understanding correct? No, it it is uh, that new two blocks are we are waiting for our future uh, future product coming into the pipeline, as well as the uh, opportunity to have a uh, uh, contract like from you if we can. We are in in discussion with two of the customers. Okay, and uh, like in terms of capex, are we progressing as per the timeline? I don't know sure. We are sitting there as per the timeline. There are a few delays because of the monsoon, but we are expecting to catch it up uh, in time. Understood. And secondly, you know, uh, on your comment uh, that uh, uh, the expectations from Electrolyte, uh, the customers are sort of uh, uh, getting ready uh, for a larger value. So you know, like, uh, what has really changed? Like, is it? Be only based on volumes, or also uh, do you expect uh, that the realizations eventually will be much better than what we would have estimated earlier? See, earlier we were talking with the uh, Nikolai formulator. Now, end customer of the battery uh, are interested, and they are signing the contract, and they are. It's a it's a com it's a trial party or two party agreements are happening uh, where we we are uh, we are in. Uh, in a long term uh, signing uh, supply contract so that's how supply chain establishment was happening uh, so once everything is happened then we will come to start right so you know considering these uh, factors uh, uh, like from a jagadia 500 tons like do you expect and like you mentioned that if we can expect revenues to kick in from fy24 itself so Do you expect at least that 500 tons to be sold out this year? Yes. Understood. Fair point. And lastly, like you know, uh, just uh, taking this question forward, uh, we mentioned in our past calls that we are looking at a market share of 5% to 10%. So that would be roughly 10,000 to 15,000 tons. So, uh, like, uh, do you expect this initial phase of investment to sort of move forward like uh, uh, or do you still expect that this would be the initial 
size of the capacity that you would be adding up. Uh, there are several things that are uh, uh, involved in this. So, if we do, very honestly, I'm saying that the quantity which I'm looking for in the past was maybe it will be violated and maybe go up, or maybe it will be remain at that size. So, currently, uh, we are waiting for so many things which has to be uh, concluded. Fair point. Understood. That's it from us. Thank you so much and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Before we move to the next question, reminder to the participant, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. Next question is from the line of Jason Sons from IDBI Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thanks for taking my question. So first of all, I would just want to uh, mention that, you know, uh, Narissa, your voice is actually very muffled. I'm sure a lot of other participants are also facing the same issue. We're not able to hear you clearly. I don't know why this was not highlighted before. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, in the same respect, if, uh, I just wanted to ask you first, uh, sir, uh, what was, uh, what's your outlook on the spec chem business? I know you have, uh, you know, invested a lot in flow chemistry into various uh, chemicals such as methyl salicylate and other other avenues as well just wanted to uh, from you an understanding on where you went to the spec uh, specialty chemicals business grow from here on uh, so my point of view specialty chemical business has a good potential but currently it has a little bit on a pressure from uh, 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 international market mainly from china especially especially from agrochemicals and, and uh, some color chemicals so it's a high pressure from China. But it is a downstream version. Uh, the, the, the company which is working on a technology aggregation, uh, process innovations and commanding on a, on a, on a, 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 a cost uh, effectiveness will definitely grow in that. Army organic is uh, continuously working. We had uh, converted our metal salicylate process from Ways to continue that has made us sustainable in this difficult period as well. Similarly, in Parabens also we are working with some innovative uh, process where which is bringing us also commanding position in Parabens as well. And then we already introduced some new molecule segments like new uh, absorbers in the uh, in the paint industries as well as uh, some uh, polymers, uh, additives, and monomers. So. That will be, will bring us the growth as well as our uh, specialty chemical will be uh, having a, a sustainable uh, performance in the future. Okay, so and uh, as far as the uh, advanced and limited business, uh, have you seen this quarter Chinese competition increasing considerably in that aspect, and probably that's why growth has been moderate to some extent. Uh, not getting your question, uh, it's equal. For me, I don't know. Yeah, I was, what I was asking in the advanced intermediate uh, business, I just wanted to know uh, that uh, from a Chinese perspective, do you see the comp competitive intensity increasing and probably that's why growth moderated there in this quarter to some extent. Is that also a factor? I understand you mentioned other factors such as uh, lower raw material prices, lower uh, prices, sluggish growth as well. Uh, so, is uh, the increase in Chinese competitive intensity also one factor for the uh, moderated growth? Yeah, uh, for the overall pharma market, yes, there is some issues related to advanced market from China, but particularly for me, organics, we mostly our products we are dominating in the market. Uh, the growth uh, little bit retarded because of the top line uh, price revision in the current market size. But that will be definitely go back to the normalizations because uh, sooner or later it will be going to the uh, normal uh, normal uh, prices because uh, raw material price, current raw material price will be giving us an advantage to the, our top line. So it will be reduced. We will be improve our margin and, and, uh, and our group. Okay. And so just finally, this Formion contract, of course, you have backed that, and uh, that's a milestone for you. Uh, any more uh, color on how you can, you know, probably expand to other intermediates and expand the scope of the contract there? 
So uh, the permanent contract is a long-term contract. It requires a lot of regulatory approvals, a lot of uh, uh, validations, and uh, it is a it is not a one-day job. It it will take time. Uh, a customer has to make their APIs, APIs has to make their formulation, formulation has to be approved worldwide. So it's, it will take time. But whatever good thing is that we achieved first contract, which is a very large contract. Uh, which is an end product, uh, which is in a, a four intermediates out of that one. We already making three. We are uh, supposed to be supplying sooner or later when we do the validations. So it will be it will be uh, a good opportunity for me organics to add this new molecule inside the uh, final code. Okay, thanks a lot for answering my question. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rin King Shah from Omkara Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Naresh Bhai. So at this point, the specialty okay. chemicals business is geared more towards parabens and methyl salicylate, which is not very high margin at this point. So going forward, where are we in our journey to add more products which are more value added? Definitely, we are working on that, but we can't replay, uh, We can't stop current product and uh, wait for the new product to take care. So we have to be. Uh, it's a phase-wise program we have made where we will phase out the old product with a low margin, yeah, by introducing the uh, new product with high margin. So I'm asking that you know whether so the sort of a blurry time timeline would also help a broad maybe if you can share. Uh, we are saying that we want to go to 19% margin, uh, EBITDA margin. That cannot be achieved with this two products. So we can we have a, a, a one or two years program where we do improvement in the profit margin of the current existing product and also introduce new high margin product. And by this way, we, we can utilize our capacity as well as we can incremental revenue and EBITDA margin. Got it. Okay, so my next question is regarding the electrolyte uh, part of it. So considering the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, which we have spoken about before by the U.S. government, so with the new contracts in electrolytes, are we expecting a better pricing than current VC prices? See, uh, the pricing actually in China is with the benefit of the self-tax benefit, and that's how it will be seven, eight, nine dollars. But if you add them, then their commercial price, if they have to export, they have to export at around 10, 12, 13 dollars. So, uh, which is the price which we are, uh, we want to have a better price than them because uh, the customer which you which want to sell in US or some of the market, they China, they don't want from China. So, that market we are targeting where we can get one or two dollars better pricing than them. Got it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, before we move to the next question, reminder to the participant, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. Next question is from the line of Gakan Tareja from ASK Investment Manager. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. Please go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sir, the first question is, on your sales, is it possible to understand, you know, year on year, how much would, uh, you know, prices have gone down and how much would volume have moved up uh, in your sales? Tonnage moved up and price gone down, how, if you could split the sales growth into that. It's a detailed question, I can... Uh, it, it, we can give you one-on-one -on -one if you want. Uh, it's, uh, there are some products which goes up, some products which go down. But this is a, uh, because the uh, number of products we sold is 90, 80, 90 products. It's uh, difficult to say the answer on. Okay. Okay, but uh, your input uh, prices would also have corrected, you know, uh, in, Key starting material prices have come down quite sharply. Uh, is it possible to understand how much would uh, the, the the KSM prices that you use 
uh, or would have come down so in the we import only very very few percent 20 28% total import that's what the problem that we have so that is not helping us uh, we do most lot of our raw material uh, in house we put all manufacturing and then we use in house so uh, definitely there is a some reduction there but that reduction is uh, the reduction of the commodity price is much higher so that's how we have to uh, adjust our price accordingly but if you want detail we can get you we will a detail uh, detail on that i think bain can able to yeah you know, so we, uh, we can connect separately and we can provide with us okay uh, so may, may i just sort of uh, request if you could you know possibly repeat the last part of what you said your voice is is not very 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 clear or uh, you know sometimes it's difficult to understand what what you are stating uh, i couldn't i couldn't get the whole of your reply but uh, i'll connect separately with uh, you know with uh, with avin and and you uh, to get the details the final question is on the uh uh in the fermian uh, contract another indian company is also been awarded a contract by fermian just want to understand uh, uh you know if it pertains to the same molecule would you would you have any uh, any understanding of whether it pertains to the same uh, molecule as as the one that you were going to supply for or is it is it you know completely separate drug for which they will be supplying uh particularly i don't know who has uh, done the the contracts and uh, by legally i am not bound not to talk about that uh we are doing uh, we got the contract we have got the order and we got uh, we are uh, we have order or size of order in our hand and we will supply that uh, that product what we we are okay okay thank and and when you when you guide you know for for that the top line that you're giving 20 to 25 percent does it uh does it assume uh any improvement in the prices of the products that that you are now selling i i, I understand that they are depressed currently and that's that's not a, a sustainable phenomenon but are you already presuming any change in them when you give the guidance or are you presuming that they you know irrespective of what what the current prices are if they sustain you can still manage that growth uh, i try to give my honest answer on that uh, because whatever the uh, commitment and uh, projected uh, for uh, projected uh, uh, requirements from our customers what we have on hand it's we that we can able to grow up to 225% uh, growth in our our revenue uh suppression in the price uh, uh, top line maybe is not a routine phenomena maybe it will be settle down and then it will be go up uh, definitely because raw material price will is, is will not be remaining in this level in that case we can have an advantage of that but we have consider all our projected uh, forecast what we received what are the orders we are in in our end and which are the new products which is going to be uh, launched in this year based on that we have given our uh, our projection from 20 25% of the uh, growth on fy24 okay and on the specialty chem sorry on the pharmaceutical intermediates business you know if i reference uh your last conference call uh uh you know you you i think you indicated that q q4 of last year you exited at at almost 23% uh, margin if I, if i remember it correctly and you you, you indicated that for fy24 uh, for the whole year you you should be in a position to to maintain that i i understand you know that uh, things have changed and input prices have changed and output prices have changed uh, but is it possible to sort of further break down your ebitda or margin guidance and and you know give us an an indication of what you are looking for in terms of possible margins for the pharmaceutical piece 
specifically so the then for the quarter it is a uh, 20.2% uh, uh, for pharma intermediate uh, and it should improve from here on and what uh, we achieved last quarter was uh, what uh, is the best uh, quarter for us so uh, it should steadily improve from here okay and on a on a yearly basis we we should say that we should improve 50 to 100 basis from basis point from last year okay 50 to 100 basis point from last year and on the electrolyte uh, business you know uh, uh, i presume for the for the two products you know that that you had earlier disclosed you subsequently disclosed two more but for the earlier two products uh, the the prices uh, have also moved and moved in a fairly volatile fashion uh, given the current prevailing prices uh, would would the margins on those products as in when the contracts uh, are uh, you know uh, are brought to fruition would the margins compare uh, and be similar to what what you are being able to generate currently uh, on an aggregate basis or would the margin profile there be very different from from this no margin will be uh, as we see that our cost is uh, as equivalent as the chinese cost so margin will be remaining uh, as we uh, as equivalent or better than what we are doing right now I, I, i'm sorry you were not very clear are, are you saying that the margins will be similar to what you are doing currently yeah or better than that okay okay all right and uh, uh, if if i recall correctly 1q of last year bhavin bhai you were indicated there was a 70 lakhs sort of a non recurring or a one off expenditure uh, in the in the other expenses if i refer back to yeah. the, the the commentary then uh, 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 Yes, the 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 numbers that that you've currently given out are are inclusive of that number in the other expenses. Yes. Okay. All right. And, and when you compare that, so that uh, one one of uh, other expense uh, of uh, Q1 last year uh, includes that number. Okay. Okay. All right. and uh, it, it, could you also give the fx variation you know uh, uh, loss or gain for for this quarter and and for the comparable quarter last year uh, so fx gain for the quarter uh, is at uh, 48 lakhs and it was uh, in uh, it was negligible last year okay all right thank you sir i'll get back in the queue Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. To ask a question, you may press star and one. Participant, to ask a question, you may press star and one. Next question is from the line of Bharat Jantra, an individual investor. Please go ahead. uh but when your line is unmuted please go ahead with your question ladies and gentlemen as there was no response from the current participant we take that as a last question thank you very much members of the management ladies and gentlemen On behalf of Ambit Capital Limited that concludes this conference thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines <laughs>